Hello friends and welcome to the Boxerville Homestead. My name's Carol. Today is February, oh my gosh, what is it? The 19th, 17th, uh, 2023. I am coming to you from the Pacific Northwest. I am north of Seattle and um, a suburb, I guess you would call it, of Seattle. And this is a podcast about homemaking, knitting, which pretty much I'm primarily a knitter. I do some crochet. It's not really my jam, but I do some, especially dishcloths, things like that. I have tried multiple times to do like dog coats for my, my boxers, but oh my gosh, I have a hard time with just like one hook or one I can run five needles knitting socks, but throw a hook in there and I'm like, what do I do with it? Anyway, no wool on again today, just like last time. I literally actually just came in from a run. Um, my husband was able to get home from work early today. And so we took Chance and Sophie and drove down to a place near our home, a place that I run a lot, um, just because it's safe, or at least I feel safe there. And um, so that's why I'm dressed the way I am. I'm still in my running gear, but I wanted to get a podcast out. I don't have a ton of things, but I have a few things that I just really wanted to be able to share. The lighting isn't good. I look really dark, don't I? I don't, I apologize. I'll hold the knitting up closer so that you are able to see it well. Um, let's see, what's new? Nothing is really new. It has been two weeks. Um, in the two weeks, you know, we've just gone through life. What we do, I'm a nurse. Uh, my husband is, uh, clears land and in a big machine. And uh, we rescue boxers. It's kind of our passion. It's, this is Sophia. Hey, Soph, how are you doing, girly? Say hello to our friends. She is pretty much at my side most of the time. <laughs> are you gonna make it in there, girl? Is there room? And she does like to be behind me in a chair. <clears throat> I think she feels safe. The tongue is normal. She's fine. Um, she was poorly bred, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, but we have a new mouth. And used as a breeder, and then when she couldn't breed anymore, uh, she was dumped. She's a boxer. We've had 13 boxers since 1989. Bought our first one, and from then on, we've rescued. It's kind of our story. Um, getting excited about gardening season. We've been going through seeds that we have from last year. I'll probably do some seed testing just to see the um, rate of germination because I'd like to be able to use them. But like with beans, we grow a ton of beans because I can those. I really like the Kentucky Pole beans, Kentucky Wonder Pole beans. Try the Kentucky Blue Mix. I know a lot of people, at least in the Pacific Northwest area, and we're zone seven. I know this is supposed to be about knitting. I'm a real gardener at heart as well. Sophia, you're gonna burn your tongue. Um, a lot of people around here grow Blue Lake. I just don't think it has the flavor that the Kentucky Wonder has, but there is a mixture of the Kentucky Blue. The nice thing about the Blue Lake is the string is like almost non-existent. And with the Kentucky Wonder, there is a string. But the flavor in the Kentucky Wonder is different. I like it and I like it for canning. I can them in quart jars because when I cook a mess of beans, even though it's just John and I now, I cook a mess of bean and I cook two quarts at a time. So that's kind of, gardening's coming up. I think it's gonna get cold next week, supposed to be into the teens again. It's been a really odd winter. We haven't had a lot of rain. We really don't get a lot of rain, <laughs> at least where I live. Um, I know Seattle's notorious for that, but I, some of that I think is, is to keep people from moving up this way. Although it, our area has grown immensely. I can tell you that as an, uh, I'm an ear nurse and I can tell you that as a nurse. Wow, what a difference. <clears throat> anyway, to knitting. The camp socks I've been telling you about, I mean, they're sitting here. I can show you, but they've not changed. But they're pretty cool, right? This is a gray owl knits pattern. I need to finish these. 
I think I'll show you what I've been doing and I think that I will make a pack that these are going to be done next week and that's what I'm going to work on and they're going to get done even though I want to cast on the sweaters so bad. Um, I need to finish these. <clears throat> I guess I don't have the other one. On. Oh, because I actually took the one that has the tent and I took it. <laughs> are we comfy now there, girl? Um, here, let me give you more room. Don't let me get in your way. So the tent one is by my chair in the family room. And because uh, I was determined to work on it. Did I mention I hate the yarn? I hate it. I think that's part of it. Yeah, it's Spud and Chloe, and it is so splitty. It's just disgusting. I would never buy it again. People probably love it. I don't. So that's the camp socks. That's by Gray Owl Knits. It's a beautiful pattern. The It's just a beautiful pattern. She, I know, has come out with several more, and there's actually one now that has, like, little flowers that are coming out. I don't remember the name of it, but it's really super sweet, and I probably will do that one. The thing that I've really pushed through this week is a new baby cardigan, and it is by Margie's Yarn Crafts. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. You know what? This is going to be backwards, I see now, because I'm doing this on my iPad. So holding this up and showing it to you, you're going to think, oh my gosh, Carol, have you been drinking? Not yet. New baby cardigan backwards. Darn it. I'm sorry. Anyway, it's by Margie's Yarn Crafts. It's fits newborn to three months plus really depends upon your gauge as we all know um I have had this yarn oh my gosh I bet at least five or six years maybe more oh my gosh I'm gonna cut my head off by doing that this I won from I can't remember well I remember it was from on the round and it was a friend of I, yeah, a friend of mine, Jen, who put my name in a, tagged me, I think it was on Instagram. And do you think I can find the tag? Absolutely not. But it was two skeins of this multicolor and one skein of this <laughs> soft, lush, really sweet pink. So I'm still knitting for baby Faya. I think I told you all that last week. And this is the new baby cardigan. Isn't it sweet? Now, the stitch markers are for where the but, um, button placement will go and where the buttonholes are. I did it just for when I was knitting it. They could probably come out. Look it. Now I did, like I think I've mentioned before, I really, really like the Norwegian bind off or cast on. Oh, there goes the head again. But doesn't that just give just such a finished, pretty? I love it. I just love it. I think it's so sweet. And look at the tiny little sleeve. Oh my gosh. I always do, I mean, I ha always do now, and I have since I think I did the Weekender, um, the twisted, twisted rib. When I do like any sort of like the ribbing for the waistband or the neckband, I just think it looks very finished, very polished. I like it. So anyway, uh, this has been soaked and blocked. The ends are woven in but they're not trimmed. I do need to trim them. I just literally took it off of the blocking. Um, I always soak and block. Well, I weave my ends in and then I soak and block and then I trim my ends in afterwards. But it's pretty cute, right? I made it a little big. I would say it's more like probably a nine month size. It's probably hard to tell, but easily a nine month. But like the, I like the fabric that it made. I think it's just really beautiful. And again, oh my gosh, look at that. The ribbing on the bottom, is that just the sweetest? I love it. Pretty cute, right? It's sweet. 
the buttons that I'm putting on. It's a little, now I don't know if anybody else is nervous or gets nervous about this, but I'm always nervous about buttons putting on for babies or kids because they put everything in their mouth. So I always tell the moms, and this is for my friend Kate, that this is her third child that I've knit for. Rowan will be seven or eight, I can't remember, in October. I remember we were working um, at a trauma center together and she went over 40 weeks pregnant and she worked until the day that, um, right before she had Rowan. Actually, she worked and she had Rowan early the next morning. But these little buttons, I don't know if you, oh, and they're gonna be backwards, what they say, now what I remember. Anyway, handmade with love is what they say. And I think they'll be super cute on this. I just think they'll be just perfect. Mm -hmm. So that I plan on delivering this weekend up to baby Faya, Faya Ray. Her name has a long story. We worked with a nurse that um, was a flight nurse. She actually worked with us in Everett and she was a flight nurse in Alaska. Um, she came to us new, <laughs> new grad and just, just full of it. Always wanted to be a flight nurse, did her dream. Um, went to Alaska, worked for uh, travel, well, flying out to the different areas and sadly, we lost her um, in a flight. She went down and she was actually pregnant with um, her first child at the time. Uh, Delta Ray was the name of the baby and her name was Stacy Ray. And she and my friend Kate were very good friends. And so she named her baby Faye Ray after Stacy's baby, Delta Ray, which is kind of sweet and a nice remembrance. Stacy was very... Um, she was cool. She was awesome. The Felix pullover is still a work in progress. Um, I've ripped it back again. I'm on row three. I still love the yarn and I am determined, but this is as far as it's been. I've really been working on getting that cardigan done for Faya and a couple of other things that I'll, I'll show you. But I'm determined I can do it. I don't know what it is. I mean, I've knit some really hard, intricate things over the years. I don't know. It's a mind block. Um, I think I mentioned last time I was going to do, I did, or I had just started casting on, on the C train hat for my husband. It is still going. I'm gonna knit it until I get to where I know that I need to decrease. This is out of Noro wool. I do not remember the name of it. I do know that we bought it when we were on a trip in Oregon, on the Oregon coast, which we tend to try to do every September in our fifth wheel. Um, it is a pattern by a Spase Trico or a Space Trico. I don't know how to say it. Basically, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and it has just great give to it. I think it's going to be super warm. I want to knit it long enough that he can fold it over so it's double on his ears. And i got a bit to go. Maybe even he can pull it up double on his head. I don't know. I'm just going to go with it. I'm trying to use up stash <laughs> until you see what I've got sitting right here next to me. I think it's just gonna be super warm. I love the colors. Um, it's pretty good, actually, that's pretty good. Just right here, it's kind of an army green, a lot of pink. My husband actually wore pink glasses for several years, a couple of years back. The boy's not afraid of color, as you will see. <laughs> the sock yarn I ordered for him, kind of a tan, a taupe some black in it, like I said, the army green, a little bit of teal, and then it has the flex all over it. And it's very, as Noro is, it's very rustic and raw feeling. I like it, and he does too. So, 
hopefully I'll, I plan on having it done next week. I am knitting it on a size US 7. These are Zings. You know, I don't remember what the needle size recommendation was. I just kind of went with what I usually knit his hat sizes for. The boy not only has big feet, he has a big head. So yeah, I don't remember what the recommended needle size was. Regardless, I think he's really going to like it and I like it. So that's the C Train hat by Espace Trico. And the Felix Cardigan, you know, I didn't say who that's by. That's kind of a no-brainer. I think everybody has knit it except for me because I can't figure it out. Uh, Amy Christopher's paid for pattern. And I'm, I know lovely and perfectly well written, but I'm having a heck of a time with it. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know, along with the new baby cardigan that is by Margie's Yarn Crafts, at the very end of her pattern, um, she mentions on there, if you have enough yarn left, you can make a simple little hat. Now, I'm doing it different than what she says on there because on there it's, you know, loosely cast on 56 stitches, join in the round, careful not to tri twist, place it, and then knit it, and then change up to a the larger size needle. So start with a size six, go up to an eight. Uh, the difference that I did is I, you know, and I am working with three strands here, which are now tangled. I did a twisted rib cast on. I did follow the 56, but I did a twisted rib cast on. And now I'm knitting and I'll knit up at least the four inches. I'll probably go, depends upon how I'm doing with my wool what I have left here. I really thought I would run out with the sweater and that's no kidding, I was panicked. Uh, so we'll see. And I'm up using a size eight. These are my signature needles that I bought years ago. Um, I really like the stiletto end of it. I don't like the fact that they do this and that you have to buy separate cables. I think they're really overpriced personally, but I have several of them. I do like knitting with them. I think the Zings are a great alternative. Um, if I have the, the signatures available in the size I need, I would of course use those, but you know, the Zings are a really close second to me. Everybody has their preference. Anyway, this is the little hat that is kind of similar off of Margie's I love the twisted rib and the Norwegian cast on. Oh, it just makes a beautiful edge, doesn't it? I mean, it's just very finished, very polished looking. I like it. <clears throat> finished, you know, I talked about the little hat being finished and do you think I can think of the name of it now? No, but it is done. This is another hat for Fay Array. I talked about it in the last couple of podcasts and the name of it. It is a free pattern. Little elf looking hat. I cannot remember the name of it for nothing. But it's done. I also did this hat. This is, there's no pattern to this. It's just a hat that I am sending to a friend in Florida. It is made out of a lion brand wool as well, a mix. Um, she's one that I would not trust with regular wool. I'm sure it will go in the washing machine and I wanted something that she could just throw in the washing machine. So it is knit on size 10 needles. It's a large bulky weight yarn. I don't remember the color of it, but it's pretty. It has kind of a mint green, a creamy white and a gray that runs through it. And I think it's pretty cute. She'll like it. It's just perfect for her. I just did a decrease that I do myself. Like I said, no pattern. I just, uh, I've just made so many hats over the years. I really don't need a pattern. Pretty cute. My niece got me these. Because she, how much I love animals. So the little, and then it says, Backwards, of course, knitted by 
Carol, and it's backwards. That's how goofy I spell my name. I didn't do it. My mother did. It was the 60s. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the vault. Oh my gosh. So have I told you about the vault? I have. If you watched the first one or whatever. I have a spare bedroom that my husband calls the vault. And it's strictly craft, but mostly full of yarn. Some sewing. I do some sewing. I do some crocheting. Do some watercolor. I just like to delve into a lot of it, but my love, as you can see, is knitting. Anyway, my husband calls it the vault because there's a lot of money in there and yarn, I'm sure. Oh my gosh. Um, I keep looking because he's upstairs showering. He got home early, as I said, and we went for a run. Anyway, before he comes back. So, Stitched by Mrs. D. Have you all watched her? I can't imagine you haven't. She is so funny. I mean, she is so funny. So she made the blanket by Kay Jones, is it, of the Bakery Bears. And it is called, <laughs> I don't remember. We talked about it. Here, let's find it. We can do this. Uh, it is by Kay Jones, Bakery Bear. Oh, Sophia, you did not just do that. Blanket, it's the blanket, and it's so many people have done it. I haven't purchased a pattern yet, so that's probably why I cannot remember. But I'm looking it up. I just went into the Google, and now I'm on Ravelry. It is, holy cow, she has a lot of patterns. A lot of socks. I did not realize that. I know that um, Paula, who is stitched by Mrs. D, is a patron of hers and does um, knits a lot of her socks. It's not the bits and bobs. Huh. I think it would be on here. Anyways, the strips, the stripes, it's a knitted blanket. Oh, jelly roll. Yeah, the jelly roll blanket. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And the one that Stitched by Mrs. D did. I love that. And I am not really a scrappy blanket kind of girl. Not yet, but maybe I am. I love this. And the colors that Paula did, Stitched by Mrs. D, it's beautiful. I don't know that she has it on there, but I've seen it on her podcast. And so she was talking about what she ordered and it was from the wool warehouse in the UK. I am not in the UK. I'm north of Seattle, but I ordered it. Holy cow. This is what came. I think it was like 30 US, 30 something US. Not a lot. Comes with a pattern, but it's a crochet pattern. And again, I can't. I just can't do it. I could not hook all of this yarn. I just could not do it. Look at all of this. And it hers is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. I just think. And she made it patchy looking. She didn't do long strips. She did maybe like six inches, some eight, kind of different here and there. Look at this. And this isn't all I got. But I'm not taking it all out now because my husband's home. Like I told you, I think I told you last time, there are certain things that they need to know, and that's fine. But the rest, they don't need to know. You just start knitting, start, and they call it the vault. I've had it. I've had it a long time, honey. Yeah, right? This is a lot. I think it's three, six. No, that's eight. 16 skeins. For like $30 or $34, whatever it was. It was like less than three bucks a skein. Anyway, I'm excited. But I have some other, oh, hey, I just found, look at there, scattered all around. See, that's how I am. But this is the yarn from the new baby cardigan. I thought I had lost that ball band. Back to this. Avery Allison yarn. And it was raspberry mocha, which is perfect for that. I mean, it, it is. It's like 
chocolate and raspberry all in one. Right? Super cute. I love it. 100% superwash merino wool, hand dyed, fingering weight. And I held it triple. I held all three of them together um, for many reasons. One, oh my gosh, you know the reason. I wanted it done. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, back to the wool warehouse and the shipping, what I ordered. So let's see. You know, I figured, well, I'm ordering that blanket. What else do I really need? Now, I'll break this down for next time because I do have plans for this. It wasn't just haphazard. So next time I think I will like, I'll print the pattern, show the wool, because I think he's out of the shower. And then um, it'll give a better idea, but right? Okay, so these two bags, you ready? These two bags right here, hello. Cost me about $10 to ship to the U.S. across the pond. I pay more than that sometimes to have it sent 50 miles. That's crazy. So anyway, Wool Warehouse, they have a lot of, they, they were out of some things that I really would have liked to have had, but um, I'm pretty tickled with what I got. Yeah. I think it took like nine days, something like that. It wasn't bad at all. Okay, so that's it. That's all for the vault. Um, that's the only new things that have come into the vault. I have really been really good for the last couple of years about not buying yarn um, and trying to use from Stash. Like with everything I showed you today, other than I show you these socks, but these are also from Stash. This is Peyton's Croy sock yarn, and this is absolutely no pattern. It's just me. Um, 56 stitches. I have small feet and ankles. Just knitting socks. I don't remember what the colorway was on this one or if I if it even had one. It's the Jacquards. Four ply. I don't know. These are just going to be a shorter sock. 75% wool, 25 nylon. Everybody knows Peyton Croy. It wears like a pig's nose. It's just good stuff, right? So I'm just like knitting, stockinette stitch, throw a pearl row in at the color change, knit, color change, pearl row. That's it. I'm just going to do, then I'll do a a uh, heel flap gusset. I usually do the Iyer Partridge heel. I kind of prefer that one. And on down the foot. I always do top down. I really, I can't remember if I've ever done, I think I've done toe up. I've mentioned we need to get into my sock drawer. I have a lot of socks. Maybe one of these. Maybe next time when we look at the wool selection. Oh, but these are on top, so. I ordered this for John for socks. This is Opal, and it's called Good Morning City. And like I said, he is a guy that likes color. So I think these are gonna be really cool. You can kind of see what they'll knit up like. Right, I hope the lighting, the lighting's bad today, you guys, I apologize. It's later in the afternoon, it's four o'clock. Like I said, we ended up going for a run when I sh was, not necessarily should have, but when I had first planned that to podcast, but I didn't know he was coming home early, and you know, you got to take advantage of those days, right? Anyway, I think this is going to be cool looking, and I hope to cast these on here really soon. With him, I do a 72 stitch uh, cast on and size 2.75 millimeter needles. He has a huge foot. I've told you that. It's like Fred Flintstone. It's like square and forever long. Big foot size. Maybe he is. We're in the Pacific Northwest. What I'm listening to right now is an audiobook called One Day in December. It's by Josie Silver. And it's a no mind, just listen to it book. Silly thing that could maybe happen. Uh, to two best friends, and uh, they're in quite a quandary right now. 
where I am in the book, but it's good. And the other book has nothing to do with knitting or anything, as did the last one. And dang it, now it's going to be backwards. But Half Baked Harvest, do you follow her on Instagram? If not, you should. Her recipes are amazing. Everything I've made from her on Instagram has been delicious. It's things often that I have just in my own home. And she came out with this book last year. Fallish, early winter maybe, I don't remember. And I'm not one anymore really to buy cookbooks. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be 60, I'm almost 60 years old. I've been cooking a long time. I like to think I'm a good cook. And um, I mean, I do look at some recipes and stuff, but like bread, I don't need a recipe to make bread. I don't need a recipe to make biscuits. It's in my head, I've done it, gravy, you know. But there are some things in here that are just a little different and a little fun and it makes for a new taste. So I've tried a few things. This rosemary chicken without giving up the recipe. Look at it. That was amazing. Easy to do, really a nice and a healthy meal. Really, really good. Looks good, right? Most of the things I've made so far, because I've not had a chance to look through this book as much and just start trying, uh, is from Instagram and her website then. And, oh, this right here, Nani's Sticky Apricot Chicken. Cover up the recipe. Holy cow, in a cast iron skillet. Mouth-watering. It was super good. Especially if, it, you know, this summer we grow basil. We'll have that all fresh. Um, really, you know, that's exciting to, to be able to do. So, I think that's it for this week. I don't have as much content, but I wanted to get something out. I appreciate anybody that's watched, especially all the way through. I do hope that you like and subscribe and come back to watch again. Please, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Anything like that actually, I think, does generate. There's Sophie. And get you higher up so that more people view, which I would appreciate. Um, and I guess I will just leave you with to um, adopt when it comes to your animals and don't shop because every life is saved by adopting and fostering. And for every dog you buy, a shelter dog dies. So with that, God bless. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you next Friday.